Hey guys, hope you're well. Today I want to explore how critic reviews have changed over the course of the years, the impact of numbers on our perceptions of the arts, especially music in the music industry, and why, despite what some might say, critics still matter. So let's go over a little definition of what critic reviews are. Critic reviews are assessments and evaluations of a creative work, such as a film, a movie, that's the same thing, <laughs> a book, or a music. And more typically, they're written by individuals who have a certain expertise in that set field. The reviews do provide an analysis of the work's artistic, technical, and emotional elements, offering valuable insights that might not be immediately apparent to the general public. Critics do often provide a deep understanding of the medium that they're reviewing, and they're also drawing historical context, industry trends, and their own intensive experience to form their opinion. Their reviews help to elevate the discourse around art and culture, fostering a deep appreciation and understanding amongst the audience. So what is the situation now? Today, critics face a unique challenge, so the impact of fandoms. With the rise of passionate fan bases, <laughs> critics often have to thread lightly to avoid backlash and harassment, and their fear may sometimes result in reviews that are that feel less authentic as they are navigating the delicate balance between honest critique and appeasing with the fans. Additionally, the numeric ratings, which are a common way of evaluating art, are, I, in my opinion, they're very flawed. The reason why is that a number can't fully capture the, the full experience of a movie, of an album, of a book, because its value varies from person to person. So that's why I think videos like the top, the, the tier review videos on YouTube are better because they offer a more personalized rating system tailored to the individual's taste. And for example, if someone says my top tier is books that I can't stop thinking about, that I always think about the a specific character and they put a specific book, but they don't put another book on in that category, the audience do do understand better where the review is coming from whether rather than just seeing um i read this book five out of ten you know because but the, what what do you what do you rate as five out of ten right what are the criteria that make you think that this book was or this song was worth a five out of ten why are critics important so despite some opinions that um that believe that critics don't play a huge role or that they're not necessary to discuss art. I want to take the the tweet from Charlie XCX as a response to um, a critic that essentially reflected back on their original review from one of Charlie XCX's EP. The original tweet from Pumpgrave stated, music critic Lara Snaps expressed regret over the over her 2016 pitchfork review of Charlie XCX's Room room. Charlie was ahead of her time, leaving me grateful, leaving me gratefully eating her dust. And as a response, Charlie XCX tweeted, This is why reviews are kind of silly in my opinion. Like if the sway of culture and popular opinion is a thing that's forcing a journalist to reconsider their review with insight, then what is the point of even reviewing in the first place? I have to disagree with Charlie comment because art is always a representation of socioeconomics and cultural context of its time whether it's a fashion collection that is ethically conscious or more very eco-friendly or a song that is very much so about raising awareness on social social issues critics reflect as a result the current social and cultural context in relation to that said art so for example, Michael Moore, who released a song supporting Palestine and raising awareness in the situation in the Middle East, is very important because it is essentially pointing the the geo geopolitical issues. And there's another example for fashion trends who are very much so emphasizing on diversity and inclusivity because that was not the case 20 years ago and people have fought for this in the industry for years and that's why now there's a bigger emphasis on diversity and inclusivity in the fashion industry. And I also wanted to point out that even art created for personal enjoyment is influenced by the artist's environment and context. So for example, someone who, I don't know why I'm going to be so dark right now, but like someone who has had a very hard past, I don't know, with like, I don't know, like, um, like 
problem with love or problem with affection or problem their art is going to reflect that past that hard past for them whereas someone who i don't know came for money or just was always inspired by lavish lifestyle while well, their work or their yeah their music is going to be a reflection of that the thing about charlie xx wondering what is the point of reviewing in the first place well it is common for artists to not be appreciated to feel underappreciated in their time and it was later that the public has a change of heart and I do believe a critic reflecting back on their original review is a valuable insight of how perceptions can change over time. So it's it's like a, a, a like digital diary, you know, when you write something about a situation like I don't know, like Paul from fifth grade said he hated like he hated me and I feel like my life is over and then five years later you look back on that entry, you're like, Wow, like I have changed so much and it was probably nothing at all. Like he probably said that he didn't like my glasses or he didn't like my t shirt and but like, you, you just always, as time moves on, you always, your perception changes. So critics do provide an interpretation based on their context, which be which can be insightful for artists, showing how their work extends beyond their usual audience. So obviously, the, the critic did say that at the time that Charlie XCX released her EP, it was very too, it, it wasn't like anything that, we, that she had heard in around, in that time but looking back now with everything that's happening the new trends in music well of course it made sense so she has to reflect back so shout out to the critic for owning up, owning up to her past critic and changing her perception the next point is more so about the need for transparency in critic reviews um, in the sense that critics should be more transparent about their grading system so we can better understand how the evaluate something so when i know when they say okay well for the music it's like the tempo and the instrumental the production the vocals but what does one vocal in that song makes it different in another song what do you evaluate is it like the the cadence or is it like the range of how the the, the singer is singing so i think artists i mean i think critics should be a bit more transparent about that and in an era where we're very very focused on numbers to determine success this could be a really essential transparency can be essentially a really essential element speaking of numbers i just don't understand why spotify publishes the number of monthly listeners or i think i think they also show how much a song is being streamed on the platform which we don't have i think we don't have that um, Apple Music, these numbers, yes, these are numbers offer insights, but they can also discourage potential listeners and add pressure on artists. So, for example, if I don't know, like sometimes you hear people say, Oh, because this song has less than a hundred streams, I'm not going to listen. But you don't like, why would you force, why would you stop yourself from watching or listening to something because it has less views? Or maybe it's like so famous that you're like, Wait, maybe I don't want to, like, everyone's listening to that, I don't even want to bother. So in a sense, numbers in themselves may discourage soon discourage consumers from listening to a song or investing in time invested time in an artist. Making these numbers less accessible to the public could take some pressure off the artist and allowing them to focus more on the craft rather than on the numbers. Because honestly, I think also with social media, we're in this time where artists have to do everything. They have to be the influencer, they have to be the artist, they have to be the the marketing agent and they have to be everything what are the labels doing you know and except for taking your rights these numbers should just like go over to the labels and relating to that i want to also talk about the impact of streaming on music criticism so streaming has drastically changed how we access music and i will also link down a video from cameron suzanne that also talk about how we're so obsessed with music numbers but it's actually in that video she had said that you know in the past fans would go to the store and buy a CD so essentially so you know when you're buying the CD you're getting the full experience of the project whereas a stream you can just there could be 10 songs and you're just gonna play that one song that was really popular on social media so you're not really getting a full insight of a song but actually what I've been doing I don't know like little side note but what I've been doing is that on my Apple music I get I, I put um what's it called like a playlist of songs to listen or albums to listen because for the past years i've not really been a 
like listening to album from front to back but this year i don't know what is what's in the air this year but i've been enjoying so much more music and the craft of putting an album together and all that stuff so yeah so i just put it when i don't have time to listen to an album i just put in my album to my listen pile and then when i have i don't know like when i'm cooking or when i'm cleaning i can just listen to that full album and yeah it's like a to-do list for me <laughs> but yes coming back to the video uh so yes essentially buying a cd was like the buying a cd which counts as a pure sell pure sell i'm not saying that right pure sales okay it's such a pure sales are this when they were the standards and artists have been selling millions of physical copies now streams are the norm which with services like spotify and apple music making music instantly ready instantly available at the click of a button however the shift of from physical copies to streaming has not translated well with numbers how we perceive numbers and how we criticize uh, how we review the success of a album of a musical project streaming numbers especially with the recent cases of fake streaming streaming farmings but also for example the fact that a certain artist would release multiple versions multiple version of the same song to increased streaming really enough i realized this um i think it was it was illusion by dua lipa but the acapella version it really felt like they just separated the like the instrumental and then they separated the acapella version and it didn't feel like an acapella it was just like they just separated that the track into two separate tracks so you, i felt like i could hear still the music i was like this this is not acapella acapella is what they were doing on glee okay so I think yeah, I think they just like put the production version. I think if you're gonna say a cappella, I'm like thinking like with the the guitar. You know, like a cappella, not the production version. Ça va pas? En tout cas, anyways, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> Coming back to what I was saying, fake streamings are very prominent. I'm not saying that all artists do it, but it's just. It can be an issue, so that's why I don't understand why we would value streams as a way of success. And I think also with the fact that, for example, um, we're saying, oh, well, I don't understand what this one went on TikTok, but they could hardly sell copies of their album. That also is a very prominent issue. And I don't know, it's like very difficult. So to address this, we should consider disregarding precise streaming numbers and we, we should focus on other metrics like the numbers a song has been downloaded on an account for example if i add like illusion on my apple music that should that should be counted towards something right even if i listen a hundred million times i think it's, it could just count as one and even if you put that song in my like waking up playlist and sports playlist and going up to the club playlist i think it should always be counted as one i think that could be a better metric of how many people are using or have chose that song into their music catalog <laughs> but also ticket sales from for concerts are also a great way to evaluate how well an artist is doing yes and i also want to point out i, I keep doing some little side notes today but a lot of artists even if they're popular, the, I think not everyone wants to do like the O2 or the biggest stadiums. Some people just want to start small, okay? And I'm saying if they're only selling 100 tickets, it doesn't even matter if it, the tickets are $7 or if they are also like $10,000. If, if, I don't know, there's 100 tickets and the artist has sold 97 of them, I think that's a really good we are saying okay you know what they're doing well people are interested in that artist they're, you shouldn't be like oh well they're not they're not performing at the o2 though they, they must have flopped or this people has not come on if an artist is performing at the local pub or at it's it's okay a lot of artists have studied that way if you look back at the at the 90s and the early 2000s a lot of artists studied at the mall okay so we're doing well i just want to reinforce why critics matters what critics matter so critics 
dissect and appraise art, helping us to understand deep layers and contextual meanings that may not be obvious to the general public. And a good critique essentially educates and bridges the gap between the masses and the academic insights enriching our appreciation of art so essentially even if even if the critic said this song is not good it's not well produced the film was not well shot even if essentially the critic said it's bad it's it's trash how the person is developing their arguments is what is essential uh, uh. And I will also point out um, an unpopular video of Naomi Cannibal and she did point out that critics help us understand an artist's work and identify shortcomings and failures, adding depth to our conception of art. In conclusion, while the landscape of criticism and readings is changing, their importance is still important. Their importance still remains, not only guide us in our choices, but they also help us understand and appreciate art on a deeper level. Well, let me know what you guys think. And I hope you liked the video and I'll see you guys next time.